Shalom. Shalom and welcome. Welcome to the White Rose Family Channel. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Simonai, and these are the words I'm compelled to present before an awakening set apart nation. To those who are drawn by the Almighty Yahuwah, He who is the beginning and the end, to Yahushua Mashiach, as it is written in John 6 44. My brothers and sisters, before I get into this segment of a series known as the Final Exodus Countdown 2023, let me say this, the views in these messages do not necessarily reflect the views of the owners, managers, shareholders, and or sponsors of this platform. With that said, let's get into this installment. This installment is about power and energy. Power and energy. You see, Yashra, as end times are here, the enemy has continuously tried to distract us from the Almighty Father, trying to deceive us into thinking we got the power, or they got the power, or he got the power, or she got the power. One of the most widespread things is talking about among this pandemic is global warming and climate change, indicating from a scientific perspective that the world is on a collision course for the extinction of man if nothing is done about it. I want to bring your attention to why I think power and energy is important. Come with me, Oyashara, as I present the case regarding power and energy. I want you to come with me to Genesis chapter 1. And it's important, O Yashra, that we begin to realize how critical it is to discern the beginnings. The beginnings. In Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning, the Almighty One created the heavens and the earth. It started with the Almighty One. In John 1, 1 through 1, 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the Almighty One, and the Word was the Almighty One. He was in the beginning with the Almighty One. All came to be through him, and without him not even one came to be that came to be. And then come with me to Revelations 22. Verse 13, my brother, my sister. Revelation 22, 13 reads, I am the Aleph and the Ta, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. My brothers and sisters, end times are ramping up. Things are getting intense and they will get more intense. For some, it has reached their doorsteps. For others, not so much. But it's coming, O Yashara. I want you to be aware of the great deceit. The great deceit. But before I even speak of how that great deceit is ramping up before our eyes and what we should do about it, let me read how the great deceit caused the fall of man. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, is an excerpt dealing with the fall of man. Let me read it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. It reads, And the Nahasha, some translators say serpent, was more crafty than all the lives of the field, which Yahuwah the Almighty One had made. And he said to the woman, is it true that the Almighty One has said, do not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the Nahash, or the serpent, we are to eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the Almighty One has said, do not eat of it, nor touch it, lest we die. And the Nahash said to the woman, you shall certainly not die. For the Almighty One knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be like the Almighty One, knowing good and evil. 
And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, and she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her and he ate. My brothers and sisters, we know that this describes the fall of man. How the woman was deceived. And I call it the great deceit. I'm going to share with you how that connects to these final days in a moment. Beware of the great distractions. Let me read this to you, O Yashara, Matthew chapter 4, verse 3 through 11. Beware of great, the great distractions. And the trier came and said to him, If you are the son of the Almighty One, command that these stones become bread. But he answered, he answering said, it has been written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of Yahuwah. Yahushua quoted Deuteronomy 8.3. Goes on to the fifth verse. Then the devil took him up into the set apart city, set him on the edge of the set apart place and said to him, if you are the son of the almighty one, throw yourself down for it has been written. He shall command his messengers concerning you and in their hands, they shall bear you up so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. Yahushua said to him, it has also been written. You shall not try Yahuwah, your almighty one. Again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the reins of the world and their esteem and said to him, all these I shall give you. If you fall down and worship me, then Yahushua said to him, go Satan, for it has been written. You shall worship Yahuwah, your almighty one and him alone. You shall serve. Then the devil left him and see messengers came and attended him. You see, O Yasharal, the enemy wanted to quote scripture in part. The enemy wanted to try to dictate how. Yahuwah should pay attention to him and follow him. But the devil was wrong. You see, in this day and age, there's a lot of things going on as it relates to power. As it relates to the energies going forward to lead people throughout the world, no matter what country you're in. Let me continue. You see, Yasharal, we must know what it means to be filled with the spirit of Yahuwah in order to navigate through all the uncertainty that is occurring as a result of this pandemic, to navigate through all the confusion from within the body of Yasharal regarding interpretation of scripture, teachings and practices and behaviors. But many do not understand what it means to be filled with the spirit of Yahushua. Many of us fail to look over in John 14, 26, I believe. When it says the almighty father will send the set apart spirit in Yahushua's name, in his name, that will teach us and remind us of all things that he said to us. We fail to understand what that means. Let me read Ephesians 5, 18 through 21, O Yasharal. For it reads, do not be drunk with wine in which is loose behavior, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to each other in psalms and songs. Remember, a psalm is a prayer. Song is something that brings about a soothing or proclaiming effect. Songs of praise, specifically, praise of what the Almighty Father is doing, and spiritual songs singing and striking the strings in your heart to the master, giving thanks always for all to the almighty one, the father in the name of our master, Yahushua Messiah, subjecting yourselves to each other in the fear of the almighty one filled with the spirit. Yashra is this. There's something called the immerse in the spirit or in some translations baptized in the spirit 
I submit to you, O Yashua, those who wake up, recognizing they are drawn by the Almighty Father to Yahushua Mashiach, recognizing that he is in them, that he is joined with their spirit. This is a reflection of being immersed in the spirit. When you know that you know unequivocally that the presence of the Almighty Father Spirit is with you, in you, in Yahushua's name. That's the immersion, or some would say the baptism of the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit is walking in obedience, yielding to his guidance, his direction. That's being filled. You see, my brothers and sisters, once you identify the presence of Yahushua in you, you no longer have to have that encounter again where you, for the first time, because once it happens, he doesn't just leave you and come back. He cleans the house. So when, when we stumble and fall, Yahushua brings discipline to clean that house to those that are his. Being filled with the Spirit, speaking to each other in psalms, songs, praise. See, that's doing, giving thanks always. Subjecting yourselves to each other in the fear of Yahuwah. You see, the spirit of Yahuwah works in us, through us, one towards another. And when we recognize his spirit, making known his presence, working in us, one towards another. When we walk in obedience, that's walking filled with the spirit, his spirit, my brothers and sisters. We must beware of actions that causes a nation to be divided against itself. You see, in these final days, in the coming together for this final exodus, there will be men, women, and children. And you see where I have singular man, woman, wife, child. It begins with one, then two or more. And you see where I continue to talk about the seven feast times, and I have it listed. Don't Neglect that this is a betting tool to help free you from strongholds, to help free you from stepping into the wrong community, camps, fellowships, and groups, to help free you from subjecting yourself to erroneous or egotistical community head or pastor or bishop or deacon or spiritual influencer. Carry this vetting tool daily. Vet the one in the mirror. Vet those whom you come in contact and judge righteously as the spirit of Yahuwah guides. For if we say we speak of a set apart nation and we speak things that are cont contrary or that conflict within scripture, then we are as a kingdom divided against itself. Yashra, oh Yashra, right now, there are many brothers and sisters. We are divided on many fronts. And one of two things will happen. There will be a coming away or a purging. Oh, Yashara. We will be disciplined and corrected. Those who will fulfill the final exodus. Those who will be martyrs for Yahushua's name. Those who will be representative of the final voices as widespread destruction come upon the face of this earth. We must understand there is a need for order division, set apartness, O Yasharal. And there is also a wicked divide. Let me read to you an order division, a reflection of the actions from the spirit of Yahushua that talks about it is he who brings division, and as he worked in us, he brings division. It is a division that works towards set apartness that is ordered. Consider the words in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 through 36, my brothers and sisters. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to bring division, a man against his father, a daughter against a mother, a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are those of his own household. If this is what Yahushua is bringing, and we are seeking to worship and obey the Almighty Father and follow the guide of our sovereign or King Yahushua and walk filled with his spirit. 
then we must demonstrate the power and the energy to execute these matters, to bring about set apartness. We must have the fortitude, the boldness, the discerning ability to know when to purge and when to come away. Power and energy, O Yashara. We must begin to discern disruptive division and what it can produce. Confusion. Out of all that is happening, O Yashara, there is a divide ordered by Yahusha and there is disruptive behavior. Consider the words in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. And Yahusha knew their thoughts. That's discerning. When Yahushua knows the thought, when Yahushua revealed thoughts to us of those that we are around. And he said to them, every rain divided against itself is laid waste. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Whether you realize it or not, Yasharal, our country is divided against itself. Every country on this planet is divided against itself. Whether it be facing democracy, communism, socialism, or authoritarian government of some other way, shape, or form, there are citizens within that divided against the regimes that run and manage these prospective governments and nations. And if the spirit of Yusha is saying, if it's divided against itself, it won't stand, that means there's an appointed time for all these nations to crumble and prove that they cannot stand. And in that crumbling, O Yashara, we will begin to see the merging of nations in such a way that the one world government will take shape. And then ultimately that one world government will still be divided against itself and it will fall. But we, O Yashara, must be mindful if we allow compromising beliefs, teachings, and practices within our gatherings, it cannot stand. It will not last. Watch. Prepare to see camps, communities, groups crumble and not stand as they are now. For I have witnessed many communities, camps, groups, fellowships, Take on names that are not in scripture. Take on names and logos to name their group, their community, their camp. Throughout the scripture, it talks about the believers at Corinth, the believers at Ephesus. There's no demonstration of dividing us even further by putting these camp labels and community labels and logos and wearing them on our embroidered garments. This is not scriptural, O Yashara. And there are cliques within these groups for the spirit of Yahuwah. Sin in Yahushua's name have revealed to me every group, every camp, every community right now have cliques where they don't all believe with what the headship is saying. They murmur and they talk and they contribute to the eroding of these specific camps, groups, and community. You see, among them, in some cases, are the obedient of Yahushua, seeking to bring correction in the ways and means that they are directed. And there are those who are just liars and deceivers to make you think they're part of a big group that is unified when it really isn't. So there's a disruptive division that must be corrected, O Yashara. And it's going to take power in the energy and the fortitude, strength to press through and discerning whether to stay or depart. Yashara, we must never forget who is the beginning and the end. It is Yahuwah, 
And he has set forth a plan during these end times, a plan that requires us to recognize his power and the energy that he gets. But there's a distraction that's going on, O Yasharal. Come with me as I continue. One great mistake. One great mistake regarding when a day begins and ends has caused the weakness among Yasharal in flowing in obedience to one of the Ten Commandments. The one that speaks of the Shabbat, when to guard it, when to honor it. You see, Yasharal in Exodus chapter 20, we read regarding the Ten Commandments, starting with verse 8. It says, Remember the Shabbat to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah, your Almighty One. You do not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days made the heavens, in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore Yahuwah blessed the Shabbat day and set it apart. Right now, O Yasharal, so many people think that it's evening to evening, and they put up an argument. Why? Because they forget who is the beginning and the end. Do you know they they have forgotten already so quickly, as quick as as quick and as strongly as they would say they believe the scriptures, they will fall into a trap of distractions. You see, Yasharal, I want to bring your attention. I talked about Yahuwah being the beginning and the end. I want to bring your attention to Revelation 22.5 before I read Genesis 1, 3, and 5 that you see up the screen. Revelation 22.5 says, And night shall be no more, and they shall have no need of a lamp or the light of the sun, because Yahuwah, the Almighty One, should give them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. You see, my brothers and sisters, we forget that he who is the beginning and the end brings light, and light unto the world. We so quickly forget that Yahuwah is the beginning and the end. And many have raced to say that Shabbat is from evening to evening when the sun goes down to the next day when the sun. So that would be starting Shabbat on the sixth day. Or that would be taking on the premise that the day begins as the sun go down. My brothers and sisters, I prayed and wondered how could one be so deceived? And I believe that the spirit of Yahushua said, in one case, many who come into the knowledge of the truth of who they are, look at the synagogue of Satan and think they took their ways and practices, not knowing that the synagogue of Satan perverted our ways and practices and flipped them. But they thought they took our ways, so they jumped in it and said, no, I'm the true Jew. And they believe Shabbat is from darkness to darkness. There are others who trust the letter. When the scriptures say the letter kills and the spirit makes alive, they trust the letter. So they depend on their own comprehension skills and they misread what the scripture is saying. Case in point, listen to these words of Genesis chapter 1, 3 through 5. Genesis chapter 1, 3 through 5. And the Almighty One said, Now remember, the Almighty One is light. I just read that, Revelation 22, 5. So he who is the light, I also read where he's the beginning and the end. So he who is the beginning is light. And he said, Let light come to be, 
and light came to be. Remember that. And he goes on to say, and the Almighty One saw the light, that it was good. And the Almighty One separated light from darkness. And the Almighty One called the light day, and darkness he called night. And there came to be evening, and there came to be morning, one day. You see, O Yasharal, they forget that it started with light. Then it came to be evening. Then it came to be morning, a day. If you study the scriptures and look at the realities of our actions, O Yasharal, you will see that we are agricultural people. There was no electricity back in the day. Man got up and worked at the crack of dawn, at, at, at the break of daylight. And the cycle of work went during the course of daylight. And when night came, man went to sleep, rested, and woke up the next morning, the next crack of day, and began the work cycle again. And when you get to the seventh cycle, the seventh time that morning came, the seventh time the dawn of a day, that's where rest come. And you rest that entire day throughout the night until that next morning of the first day of the week. I'm not here to argue with you, Yasharal. But I will tell you this. There will be uni, unity among the final gathered. There will be chosen leaders that will execute the right rulings as it relates to Shabbat. And many fail to realize that knowing when to guard Shabbat and when to honor it is going to be critical in our motion, in our movement, as we are gathered from the four corners of the earth. Shabbat, morning to morning. If you sincerely want to go through all the scriptures pertaining to that, let us have that dialogue, not argument. Let us have that dialogue and ask the questions and seek out the answers from the spirit of you who are working in us to bring clarity. Let us not take on something because that's what most people say Shabbat start, or that's what my camp or everybody can't be wrong. Do not fall for the deception. The time to have the power and the energy to come away from false teachings is now, my brothers and sisters. Let me continue. We must discern that Shabbat brings rest. It's a time for re-energizing our properties. I'm not talking about land. I'm just saying our body functions. Resting, focusing on Yahushua, being refreshed, being strengthened. Consider Exodus 20, verse 8 through 11 that I just read, that I just spoke of. The Shabbat, my brothers and sisters, must and will come to be honored and guarded correctly among those who will be amongst the final gathered and more. You see, my brothers and sisters, it's important to discover the cycles of rest, the cycles of work. Consider this, Yashara, if you doubt these words, watch as end times get intense. There will be blackouts across the face of the earth. They have already begun in some places. You see, famine, pestilence, we understand diseases and everything, but we fail to realize when he talks about drought Water is one of the most critical things in producing energy, the energy that man used, utilities. With drought will come blackouts. Even in war, different weapons will be used to create blackouts, whether it be hacking the electrical grid or electromagnetic impulse devices shutting down our electricity. Then we will learn that we can mostly work when daylight comes. 
we will then begin to understand that just as in days of old, work was mostly done during daylight. And we will come into the realization that that seventh day of rest is from morning to morning. Let me continue. Yasharal, Yasharal, not only regarding Shabbat, but just regarding the things we focus on and talk about. Let us choose who fuel our actions. Let us begin to discover the source, just like with Shabbat, the source of light. Where did light begin? You might say, well, what are you talking about? End times with these blackouts, end times with climate change and global warming, Man is presenting narratives for us to focus on and say, here's the solution. Here's the answer to our energy problems. Here's the answer to power when it comes to governing states and counties and cities and communities and provinces and countries and nations. Here's the key to power. Here's the key to the energy that we should use as we press forward during these years of climate change and global warming. See, we need to look at where are the origins? What's the origin? What's happening? You see, O Yasharal, because there is a great distraction. There's great deceit. Come with me, O Yasharal, as I continue regarding power and energy. You see, my brothers and sisters, he who identifies contradictory and conflicting teachings or messages will grow to know true power and energy. There's a power and energy given by the Almighty Father to guide our footsteps, to establish our ways, to reflect His instructions. But man will have you think that the power and might and the energy that comes about is a result of influencers. I've heard people say, the Illuminati have this, the Club of Rome have that. This secret society have that. And these are the top three, three or type, top 1% who controls everything, who have the power to control the energy. They own the plants and the resources. But we fail to forget, O Yasharal, and let us who are set apart not forget the power and might of Yahuwah. Then there is the discussion of nuclear how it can be a powerful and effective method for energy and power. And then there's the discussion as well, what about hydrogen, which is very volatile, that can lead to explosives and death. Then there's the power and energy from fossil fuels. And then there's the discussion of the Green New Deal that says, Solar, solar and wind energy is the best way to go. Windmills, without any regards to what materials are used to create the solar cells for absorbing the sun. What materials are used to create and manufacture the windmills? You see, my brothers and sisters, all of these that speak of power and energy, all of these that uh, consume discussion among the circles of people who care about this planet. All of these that I just mentioned are self-destructing, are deceiving, for they all bring about something that contributes to the destruction of this planet and our own demise. My brothers and sisters, For we who are set apart ones, our focus must be on identifying the plan of Yahuwah for these end times, identify the duties and tasks before us, and identify the power and energy that he gives us to do what is expected from him. All of these others are self-destruction. They, the materials, the actions, the influencers, all of these are self-destruction. It's like Satan, what he did to Eve, to Adam, 
having them think that by eating the fruit, they would be as Yahuwah. He deceived them and said, here's the energy, here's the power in this fruit. And they failed to look at from the very beginning who created them. You see, if the focus is on who created you, then this is life-giving, life-strengthening. But taking your focus off the beginning, he who is the beginning, it led to the fall of man and the destruction of many over the years. And it will lead to destruction of many more over the years. Yashra, oh Yashra, power and energy. We must discern that everlasting power exists. And we must begin to discern the difference between everlasting power and energy and destruct, self-destructing energy. Self-destructing energy is saying, I want coal, I want nuclear, I want solar, I want wind, but disregard the materials it takes to get that. I heard on a news broadcast, oh Yashara, uh, let me come back for a minute. I heard on a newscast where uh, one nation went to try to be completely green energy and due to volcanic activity and storms, they were, they were not getting as much sun as they anticipated. Due to climate change, the jet streams was changing with much wind as they anticipated. And as a result, the energy grids became mildly or loosely speaking ineffective. You see, so the things that appear to be the answer, man has their narrative, but the Almighty Father has a narrative for us. That's to obey and worship him, to identify end time prophecies will be fulfilled, to know the power of his might and what he will provide. Yashra, oh Yashra. Power and energy. Remember the flood? Do you, do we, remember the flood? Genesis 7, 17 through 22. And the flood was on the earth 40 days, and the waters increased, lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. And the waters were mighty and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the water. And the waters were exceedingly mighty on the earth, and all the high mountains under all the heavens were covered. The waters became mighty, 15 cubits upwards, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died, the creeping creatures on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every swarming creature that swarmed on the earth and all mankind. All in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life. All that was on dry land died. Does that describe power? Did it say Noah set off a nuclear bomb and caused a flood? Did it say he did some maneuvers, actions that, that brought about flood, waters, rain from the sky? No. This was the power and might of the Almighty Father. That's the power we must begin to trust and believe in for guiding us through these last days but navigating us through what's to expect and what's to come. Remember Musha, Moses. Let me read just an excerpt of Exodus 11, 1 and Exodus 14, 21 and 22. Exodus chapter 11, verse 1. And Yahushua said to Moshe, I am bringing yet one more plague on Pharaoh and on Mitzrayim and on Mitzrayim or Egypt depending on what version you're using. After that, he is going to let you go from here. When he lets you go, he shall drive you out from here altogether. That's Exodus 11.1. 1. The hand of Yahuwah made these things happen. And we know through reading the story, Musha, Aharon, Yasharal, all were affected by the power and might demonstrated by the Almighty Father. Exodus chapter 14, 21 and 22 says, And Moshe stretched out his hand over the sea, 
and you who will cause the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Yashua went into the midst of the sea on dry ground and the waters were a wall to them on their right and on their left. The power and might of Yahuwah working through Musha, paving the way for Yashua to return, or should I say journey, to the promised land. Yashua, oh Yashua, know this, there will be movement. There will be a final exodus. There will be a gathering of the children of Yahuwah. Let me go back for a minute. Just as the Most High parted the Red Seas, I see some people who have are looking at the possibility of the Atlantic Ocean being parted and we're going across dry land. This is not going to happen, O Yasharal. I prayed and sought the Most High Father regarding our return, those that are on the Western Hemisphere. And I am compelled to believe, as I have mentioned for many years, that the majority of Yasharal, set apart Yasharal, that will fulfill the final exodus that will be coming from the Western Hemisphere will travel back to the Promised Land on ships, container ships. Container ships structured for carrying a large group of people. You see, though the scriptures mention a remnant, when you compare a remnant to the population on the planet, it can be millions of people. And if you begin to look at an airplane, most airplanes can carry maybe three to 500 people at best. Trains will not go across the ocean, so that limits the buses, cars, and trucks. If there is no parting of the Atlantic Ocean, will not be able to do it. But a container ship configured the right way can carry in upwards of 25 to 50,000 people on one ship. And to the young, it would be an adventure for many of them. To the old, out of the convenience and vanity and arrogance, they would lean on cruise ship. A cruise ship can carry only 5, 000, roughly three to 5,000 people depending on its size. Will there be some cruise ship possibly involved? Possibly. It would be our, an armada of millions of people leaving the U.S., leaving the Western Hemisphere, heading for the Promised Land. And I say to you, O Yashara, O wineskins, people with old habits and behaviors, people who are stuck on habits of convenience, will be reluctant to get on a container ship. Those who will seek to gain their own lives will be eager to get on a container ship. If there are earthquakes, volcanoes, widespread destruction, pandemic disease, wars and battles, conditions will ramp up to where it would make some people eager to get on some form of transportation that they believe will take them to a land where they will be protected, where there will be plenty, where there will be joy. Trust and believe is coming, O Yashara. Let me continue. Power and energy. There are some individuals that apply and say, well, it's more our camp, our community is large in numbers. There are some Leadership that say, ain't no way we're going to miss out on this final exodus. No one's going to keep me off the ship. And they think by just speaking that in their own circles, that the spirit of Yahuwah is not aware of it, nor does he hold it back from his leadership, his chosen ones. I have seen individuals say, come hell or high water, I'm going to be on that ship, or I'm going to be on that plane, or we're getting on there first. Yashara, O oh Yashara, know this, the power of Yahuwah, just as it says in the days of Noah and days of Lot. In the days of Lot, 
it was the messengers that led Lot by the hand out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I say messengers will be present. Leadership will be present. Chosen leaders and guards will be present as the hand and the power and might, as the words of the spirit of Yahuwah sent in Yahushua's name. Point out who will be entering these ships, who will be entering and being amongst the ranks of those gathered from the four corners that will cross the sea. Pray and watch for the power and might of Yahuwah will remove all obstacles that try to impede or stop this from coming to be. And I believe by December 21st of 2023, it will come into reality that our final exodus, that promise is being fulfilled. And there are things that must be done, tasks and duties. From the least to the greatest, we will learn our part of Yashra. If you doubt the power of Yahuwah removes obstacles, consider the example that we read in Numbers chapter 16, verse 28 through 33. It was a time when there were those confronted by the Almighty Father, who confronted the Almighty Father use of Moshe and Aharon, who confronted the leadership, who rebelled and murmured against the leadership of Yahuwah, therefore confronting Yahuwah. And I'm sharing with you in an excerpt, but you can read the whole chapter. Come with me to number 16, 28 through 33. For here it reads, and Moshe said, by this you know that Yahuwah has sent me to do all these works, that they are not from my own heart. If these die as all men do, and if they are visited as all men are visited, then Yahuwah has not sent me. But if Yahuwah creates what is unheard of, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the grave, Sheol, then shall know, then you shall know that these men have scorned. And it, and, it, and it came to be, as he ended speaking these words, that the ground under, the split, under them split apart, that the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the men of Korah with all their goods. Dathan, Biram, and Korah, if you read at the beginning of the chapter, they were in their families, the children, their goods, swallowed up. This is the account that I know of of probably the first or one of the first sinkholes known to man. The scripture goes on to say, and so they and all those with them went down alive into the grave and the earth closed over them and they perished from the midst of the assembly. Just as we seen or we read of this account from days of old, I say to you, Yasharal, we will see Brothers and sisters speak boldly and we will see the almighty father respond. Remember Eliyahu or Elijah. Another example of power and energy that is everlasting. In second Kings chapter one, verse 10, we read where Eliyahu called down fire demonstrating the power of Yahuwah. It says, 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 10, And Eliyahu answered and said to the captain of the 50, If I am a man of the Almighty One, let fire come down from the heavens and consume you and your 50 men. And fire came down from the heavens and consumed him and his 50. For the sake of time, O Yashua, I want you to skip down to the 14th verse. Same chapter, 2 Kings 1, 14. It says, see, fire has come down from the heavens and burned up the 50, two captains of 50s with their 50s. It goes on to say, this captain is saying, this is the third time. Let my life be precious in your eyes. Fearing the power of Yahuwah, working in Elijah, the power and energy, true power and energy of Yahshua. My brothers and sisters, 
end times will prove to demand that we yield to the Almighty Father to demonstrate His power and energy working in us, through us, one towards another. We will learn the importance of examining all things and choosing wisely. Do you not know that you are probably being trained and developed to call out the power of Yahuwah as we are gathered, when obstacles stand in your way, when enemies try to come and stop you with guns or weapons? And you, some of us will shout, if we represent the power and might, or in the name of Yahuwah, I call upon my Father in Yahushua's name to remove this obstacle, or to remove their sight, or to cause the very breath to be taken from their very lives. Powerful things we will do, O Yasharal, where man will know that there is an Almighty One who is alive and present before us. Remember these words, my brothers and sisters. Remember the life in these words and know that they come with vast meanings that join hand. Consider these words in John 14, verse 10 through 14. John 14, verse 10 through 14. For it reads, Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak for myself, but the Father who stays in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Otherwise, believe me because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me and the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these he shall do because I go to my Father. Greater works. These greater works span from food to healing the sick. Believe it or not, calling on demonstration of the power of the Almighty Father to remove obstacles, to purge the wicked pastors, deacons, priests, bishops, those that are wicked, to purge them from our midst. Greater works, works that come with the strength to correct those who sincerely seek to do the will of the Almighty Father and bring them into subjection to the correction that is needed to strengthen them. Either they are remain as a community pastor, priest, head, bishop, elder, spiritual influence that becomes corrected and reproved, or they will be removed, or we will be removed from their midst. You see, greater works than these should they do because I go to the Father. Why? Because the Spirit of Yahuwah will work in his children, one towards another, in the name of Yahushua. He goes on to say in the 13th verse, And whatever you ask in my name, that I shall do, in order that the Father might be esteemed in the Son. If you ask whatever in my name, I shall do it. Listen carefully, O Yasharal. For there's the abuse of people thinking they can just ask anything and say in Yahushua's name, and they're going to get it. And when they don't get it, they get dis disappointed because they fall into the, the deceit of many people because they're following the letter. We must be mindful. No nation divided against itself can stand. So to pray something that is contrary to the will of the Father would be counterproductive, would be wrong, would be wicked. If you doubt these words, consider 1 John 5, 13 and 14. 1 John 5, 13 and 14. For it reads, I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of the Almighty One, so that you know that you possess everlasting life, and so that you believe in the name of the Son of the Almighty One. And this is the bonus that we have in him, that we ask that if we ask whatever according to his desire, he heals us. So don't get caught up thinking just because you throw his name out there that he's going to give it to you, what you want it. We must discern the desire of the Almighty Father. We must be moved to pray according to his will and witness his response and understand what must be done with each passing moment, O Yasharal. 
Yashara, O Yashara. We will discover and witness the set apart power of the Almighty Father Yahuwah in the coming days like never before, from healing the sick to strengthening and fortifying those he are directing to complete the final exodus, to strengthening and fortifying the 144,000, 12,000 Hebrews from each of the 12 tribes of Yashara, from strengthening, fortifying, and empowering the great multitude to move and navigate through all the uncertainty, all the confusion, all the destruction that will intensify. We will witness the power and might of the Almighty Father, energizing us, giving us the energy to fulfill what he has promised. Make no mistake, O Yasharal, power and energy, power and energy from the Almighty Father. He who is the beginning and the end, the Aleph and the Ta. Let's spend our time talking about identifying, discerning, demonstrating his power, his energy. Leave the outer court alone. Yes, we talk about signs of the time, but let's not spend so much time about what man is doing, man's narrative, or man's argument over these different energy types or utilities types, or even this Green New Deal. Yashra, O Yashra, I say to you, know what power we should be focusing on. Know what energy we should be demonstrating. Know what takes priority. And know the origins of any proposed solution to see if it brings self-destruction attributes. You see, because those who are spending all this energy fighting and arguing over which one of these man-made resources takes priority are neglecting what the Almighty Father has to say about the matter. What did you think the narrative was going to be in these end times from governments and communities? Did you think that they was going to start saying, oh, these are end time prophecies. The Almighty Father Yahuwah is getting ready to gather his children. No, they have a narrative of distraction, the great deceit on what is powerful, what is best. And they are sadly mistaken. Yashara, oh Yashara, power and energy. I want you to recognize, my brothers and sisters, the importance. Bear with me a second. the importance of identifying the realities of what's unfolding. Each of us have tasks to do. Ask questions, engage in conversations that stirs your spirit, that meets up with your spirit that is being stirred by the Almighty Father. Engage in conversation to identify what's expected of you and how you fit into the plan of the Almighty Father. What is expected of you? Did the Almighty Father tell Noah to build an ark without giving him the strength, the fortitude, the resources to build it, construct it? With the power and might to withstand the waters and hold the inhabitants of the ark? Power and energy, O Yashara. It will be a time where we will see shock and awe. It'll be a time we'll see some young and anointed speak power necessary for for the movement, the successful movement of Yashara. We will see it in a way that we never could have imagined. What say you? Are you prepared to let the flow of the power and might of the Almighty Father come through you in words that he direct you to say in these final days? Stay tuned, O Yashara. Details and processes will be made clear. The hand of the Almighty Father will stir within us and we will speak what we are told to speak. We will know when to yield and when to move, when to listen, when to obey. We will begin to identify what power and energy takes priority over all others 
that might be described as power and energy. It is beyond electricity. It is beyond man's utilities. Yashara, oh Yashara, let us prepare to establish priorities and walk and march in them. On that note, I salute your patience, your tolerance, your hunger for set apartness. I pray for your good health. I pray for your recovery if you are sick. I pray for you that you have the strength, no matter what condition these earthen vessels are in, to know that in the plan of the Almighty Father, we are His and we are His forever. Those who are drawn by Him to Yahushua Mashiach. And don't get discouraged. Know the plan. Know that He reigned on the just and the unjust. Know that there will be examples set and there will be those who live to tell of the story. So lessons I learned that we may grow and not repeat mistakes of the past. On that note, O Yashara, be encouraged. And I say again, behold, the hand of Yahuwah with much power and energy is unfolding before our very eyes. And soon it would be within our face with such intensity, there will be no doubt that the presence of the Almighty Father is before us. On that note, I say to you, Yasharal, stay tuned. There's much work to be done. And if you'd like to contribute, notice the Cash Tag app, Cash App, White Rose Family. Help me, O Yasharal, as I help a set apart nation, as I contribute to the preparations necessary for our final exodus on the Western Hemisphere. Help me, O Yashara. Help me to help you. Some of the very seeds you might plant may come back and find that it is something that was for you later on. But I have no doubt in my mind that the Almighty Father hardens hearts and softens hearts, that the Almighty Father will make a way for things to happen and that his promises will be fulfilled. On that note, take care, my brothers and sisters. Be encouraged. Lift your heads up and cry out to the Almighty Father in the name of Yahushua. Seeking to desire, having the desire and seeking to discern his will for you and for us. I say to you now, Shalom. Shalom, my brothers and sisters. <laughs>